the technology of digital photography is mind-blowing. A digital sensor can record as many as 16.8 million colors. We can only see 10 million. And of course, a rainbow only has seven. However, this amazing technology does not come without its problems. And if taken for granted, a digital camera may not always produce the image as expected. A quality digital photograph contains a lot of information and early cameras and computers experienced difficulty in capturing and storing images because of lack of space on a memory card and the ability of a computer to process this information, even simple adjustments on Photoshop that today we take for granted. A system of image compression was urgently needed, hence the birth of the JPEG file. JPEG is an acronym for Joint Photographic Experts Group, a name given to a group of rather clever people who, from 1986, established a coding for compressing digital images, which is extremely sophisticated, and the group still meets today. Compression is made at various rates, which can affect quality. When opened on a computer, the code used by the compression process restores the image to its full resolution, but the quality can be sacrificed, especially at high compression rates. JPEG files have been around for over 30 years and are still used successfully today, but they have problems, and with the increased availability of image storage space and more powerful computers, alternative systems have come into play that offer better quality. An early problem with JPEG image files concerned image adjustment in Photoshop and similar quality products. Because the image had already been compressed and digitally processed, further saves after adjustments in Photoshop could reduce the quality of the image. As computers became more powerful and memory cards increased in capacity, TIFF files, meaning Tagged Image File Format, established in 1986, became popular because the photographic quality could be maintained during editing as the file was uncompressed. They occupied more space on memory cards, but still being digitally processed, they only answered the problem halfway. RAW was their breakthrough and today used extensively amongst professional and advanced amateur photographers. Instead of digitally processing the JPEG or TIFF file in camera, the RAW image instead is transferred to the memory card unprocessed. This resulted in increased quality but with a major bonus as the unprocessed image could subsequently be handled with greater flexibility in an image editor. Unlike JPEG or TIFF files, RAW is not an acronym. The image on the memory card is unprocessed. Therefore, it is RAW and also known as a digital negative. First, processing is carried out in the memory of a computer, requiring special software, and then saved to JPEG later. This means that adjustments can be made as if in camera. If this was possible with film, it would be like making corrections to exposure after a shoot before sending the film to Boots for processing. By delaying the saving of the raw image into a processed file, changes are conducted before saving to JPEG, the original raw image kept as backup and archived. 
Benefits are quality and flexibility. Whilst I would encourage any photographer to get their technique right when taking a picture, mistakes occur and perhaps surprisingly, not everything can be accomplished in camera. This is RAW's big plus and its multifarious qualities will be discussed in later photo soundbites. For now, suffice to say, if like me, you have taken a set of unrepentant beatable images and the colour balance was incorrectly set. A raw file opened in Photoshop can be corrected at a click of the mouse button. Not so with JPEG, but there is much more that raw files can offer.